ever wanted those dreamy, miniature-looking photos like you see on Instagram or Reddit, but when you looked up the prices of tilt-shift lenses, you realized they cost more than your entire camera setup? Yeah, me too. So I decided to build my own using an old Olympus film lens I stole from my father, some clever 3D printing, and the smallest amount of math. Let me show you how I did it. Before we dive into the build, let's talk about tilt shift. These lenses are often used to create that fake miniature effect due to the shallow depth of field on distant objects. This tricks your mind as the human brain associates shallow depth of field with objects that are closer to your face. Another great use case of tilt shift lenses is architectural photography. Since you can shift the lens, you can keep the tops of buildings in frame without angling your camera to the sky. This allows you to keep the lines of the building straight and parallel to each other. Back to the issue at hand. Real tilt shift lenses cost more than my camera. Especially for micro four thirds shooters like me, it's a niche market and options are limited. So taking inspiration for some designs, I set out to make my own. Existing tilt shift lenses seem to use a thumb screw securing system for clamping the amount of tilt into place. While this may work nicely for a lens made out of metal, I thought this might lead to a lot of light leakage for a plastic 3D printed lens adapter. So instead I went with a design inspired by my electric screwdriver. Basically, two slanted faces that rotate against each other allow a range of tilt between 0 and 8.4 degrees, which lines up with what's on the market. For the shifting feature, I employed a simple design where there is a track that the lens mounts to that can simply slide back and forth. A small M2 thumb screw allows for firm intervals of shift. The maximum amount of shift allowed by my design is about 8 millimeters. Since the on-the-market lenses allow for you to rotate the lens to accommodate for landscape and portrait shots presumably, I also allowed for this by simply adding more slots for the pin that is on the camera body and secures the lens rotationally. This allows for four different rotational orientations, of course including landscape and portrait modes. I can get away with doing this since the lens doesn't electronically communicate with the camera, so it's okay to be rotated any which way. After deciding on the mechanisms for the motion of the optic, it came time to actually design the adapter. This is where a little bit of math is important. To know what length to make the adapter in its neutral, untilted form, you need to know the flange distances of the two systems you are trying to adapt to each other. The Micro Four Thirds system that my camera uses has a flange distance of 19 and a quarter millimeters, and the flange distance of the old Olympus film lens is 46 millimeters. This means that if we subtract the two numbers, we need our adapter to be exactly 26.75 millimeters thick to allow us to focus properly on things up close and far away. If you're wondering why I'm using an old film lens instead of a normal Micro Four Thirds lens, it's because adding an adapter adds some space between the lens and the camera. And this is exactly what a macro tube adapter does. In essence, it's only good for taking pictures of small things up close. If you are going to attempt this project with different format lenses, I was able to shrink my design to around 19 millimeters by eliminating some bulk and removing the shift functionality. This should allow for other systems that have closer flange distances. After bringing my design into the real world through 3D printing, I assembled it using medium thick Starbond super glue and some M2 screws and heat set inserts. The only unconventional part I used was a spring from a mechanical pencil for the ball and detent mechanism to adjust the tilt angle. Overall, the parts to build this adapter, excluding the lens, should cost you less than $10, assuming you already have a 3D printer with filament. With the adapter done, now it's time to go out and shoot. There is a bit of a learning curve to the tilt shift effect. Optimally, you want a bit of an elevated vantage point and good lighting, as well as strong colors to mimic the diorama effect though the colors can be tweaked in post-processing. The most challenging part of using my lens setup was focusing on the subject. Due to the lens not having autofocus and it not being the sharpest lens to begin with, getting crisp images was a bit challenging. Using the manual focus spot zoom aid on my camera was a great help, but I still found myself with lots of blurry shots. Overall, the total cost is just a few bucks in filament and some time. If you're into photography and love tinkering, give this a shot been having a lot of fun with it lately. It's a great reminder that photography doesn't need to be obscenely expensive. Let me know in the comments if you attempt this build or would like the files.